The West Philippine Sea Newsletter, Volume 8. China attempts to intimidate the Philippines. Japan and the Philippines sign security agreement. And the U.S. sends mixed messages about de-escalation. Another week passed with no major clashes in the West Philippine Sea, but diplomatic maneuvering in the front of the world press and military intimidation highlighted the situation where the Chinese are attempting to intimidate their regional neighbors, but especially the Philippines. The Philippines also continue its media campaign to highlight the abuses and illegal behavior of the Chinese government and to try to avoid steps that China could use to provoke an international incident. This does not mean that the Philippines is backing off their legal sovereignty claims in the region and continues to pursue regional relations to bolster its position against an aggressive China. The trend in the West Philippine Sea indicates China's increasing aggression aimed at intimidating regional countries into submitting to its demands in the South China Sea. Meanwhile, the Philippines is attempting to prevent this escalation without relinquishing its internationally recognized sovereign rights. China has relocated its main intimidation tactics to the Escota Shoal. In May and June, the Philippines discovered evidence of China attempting to build an artificial island using ground-up coral as one of the building materials. This has been a common practice for China in the region as it has built artificial islands in the South China Sea to bolster its illegal sovereignty claims and to militarize the region. In response, the Philippines deployed its largest Coast Guard ship, the BRP Teresa Magbanua and two smaller vessels to the maintain to maintain a constant presence to keep the Chinese from resuming their their island building in the Escota Shoal, which is part of the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone or EEZ. The Philippines Justice Department was also preparing a legal case against China, citing its actions in building the island and environmental damage caused by the destruction of the coral. Uh, the destruction of coral reefs for building materials. The Chinese responded this week by deploying their largest Coast Guard vessel called the Monster. This 12,000 ton vessel designated CCG 5901 is three times larger than the, the Magbanua, Magbanua, excuse my pronunciation. The Monster dropped anchor at the Escota Shoal in an attempt to intimidate the Philippines by deploying a vessel that is three times larger than the Philippine, the largest Philippine Coast Guard vessel, and when it did, and when it dropped its anchor, it did so 800 yards or 731 meters from the Philippine ship. The Chinese Foreign Ministry made the statement that its police and military were enforcing the law in their waters. The Philippines replied that the Chinese act was a show of force to intimidate them, but they would not be given in to intimidation and would not pull out of the shoal. The China, the Chinese attempted to make a tit-for-tat claim of environmental damage to the Escota Shoal, have accused the Philippines of damaging the coral of the second Thomas Shoal when they chose to ground the Sierra Madre at the shoal in 1999 and have ignored the Chinese demands to remove it. The Philippines responded by claiming that China, through the creation of about 30 artificial outposts throughout the South China Sea has caused damage to the coral reef and seafloor. China created most of these artificial outposts using ground up coral. This was a weak attempt by China to deflect by accusing the Philippines of actions it has been taking, but on a much larger scale in both the West Philippine Sea and the South China Sea. The Philippines also needed to evacuate a service member from the Sierra Madre this week for medical reasons. The Philippines were successful in evacuating the service member and getting them to a hospital where they were in stable condition. The Philippines claimed that the Chinese Coast Guard tried to hinder the evacuation attempt without providing any further details. However, the Chinese Coast Guard has been relentlessly patrolling in the Second Thomas Shoal and the grounding location of the Sierra Madre. This is the same location on June 17th as the incident occurred in which Chinese subdued Philippine service personnel attempting to reach the Sierra Madre and damage two of the rubber boats by Chinese boarding parties of axe and knife and spear-wielding Coast Guardsmen. The evacuation at Sierra Madre occurred less than a week after the Chinese Coast Guard was documented attempting to obstruct the Philippine Coast Guard from rescuing two fishermen in the Panatog Shoal in the West Philippine Sea. 
As a result, the Chinese Coast Guard has demonstrated and, do and documented an effort to prevent the re rendering of assistance to non-Chinese citizens in the region. In the latest incident at the Second Thomas Shoal, China did not deny attempting to stop the evacuation, and its foreign ministry stated that it would allow vital supplies and the evacuation of service personnel from the Sierra Madres if the Philippines notified China first. This is an apparent step of de-escalation from China, but, is a con con but the concession's subtleties are that the Philippines must ask permission from China to gain access to its own sovereign territory. The Philippines and Japan convened the 2 plus 2 meeting, a gathering of their respective civilian defense and foreign ministers, further undermining China's demands for no formation of alliances in the Western Pacific and bilateral resolution of all disputes. However, China does not adhere to these demands, as evidenced by its participation in this week's Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting and BRICS, both of which, are help, which it helped establish, and its deployment of a small military contingent to participate in an anti-terrorism exercise in Belarus close to Poland's NATO border. The result of the Philippines and Japanese meeting was the signing of the Reciprocal Access Agreement, which allows both countries to temporarily deploy their armed forces to each other's territories. The Japanese and Philippine representatives provided a joint statement that the that the international community needs to speak out on the importance of international rule, rules-based order and the rule of law regarding access to the seas. The statement clearly targeted China and its illegal claims. Once both countries ratify it, the agreement will go into effect. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. ordered the Philippine military to de-escalate tensions without compromising its sovereign rights. General Romeo Brauner of the Philippine Armed Forces acknowledged the order to the press but did not provide further de details. It is easy to determine the Philippines is not the aggressor in the region, so the statement from President Marcos can be considered a concession to pacify China. Did the request to de-escalate or at least sound conciliatory result from a growing public concern in the U.S. Department of Defense that the current trajectory of the West Philippine Sea is one that can lead to conflict? The U.S. has publicly supported the Philippines in its legal claims, has publicly stated its intention to honor the defense agreement with the Philippines, and has publicly stated at the same time to China. However, it has also signaled the need for de-escalation, a de-escalation in which the U.S. will not take the lead, instead leaving it to the Philippines and Japan. The United States' mixed messaging has put the Philippines in a difficult position as well as Japan. It has announced publicly that it wants to avoid an escalation with China and ordered its military to de-escalate tensions in the region. This is primarily a public relations strategy to show that the Philippines is striving to prevent a war with China, a sentiment that the U.S. shares. However, it's important to note that China may perceive this as a weakness in both Philippines and U.S.'s resolve. China is likely to intensify the intimidation tactics against the Philippines rather than seizing the chance to de-escalate the situation themselves. China is utilizing, utilizing the space the Philippines provided for de-escalation to intensify its pressure on the Philippines for further unilateral concessions. The Philippines continues to resolutely assert its sovereign claims in the West Philippine Sea, though. It continues to pursue a legal claim for China's environmental damage to the Esco in the Escota Shoal, which has led to a weak non-legal counterclaim against the Philippines in the second Thomas Shoal. China has implemented a strategy of intimidation in the region, aiming to capitalize on the de-escalation messaging in the Philippines. It is prepared to assume the risk that any incident resulting from its intimidation could serve as rationale for using force or threatening force to pressure the Philippines into further concessions to prevent the escalation. This, in turn, could lead China intensifying its efforts to bolster its illegal claims. The Philippines continues to press its successful strategy of fostering alliances as it continues to formalize the security relationship with Japan. The U.S. and the Philippines should follow a policy not to concede to China in the region because a war with the Philippines is not a war the Chinese want to fight. The Philippines has demonstrated that it is not, not want war with China, but it should not surrender its ultimate strength 
as China is not in a position to successfully operate in the West Philippine Sea against determined opponents in the medium term. 